Why does the narcissist keep your property? The formal relationship has ended. Either the narcissist is disengaged from you or you have escaped. And the formal relationship is over. Whether you were boyfriend and girlfriend and had some possessions or property at the narcissist's house. Or that you lived together as a couple or you were married and therefore there was property to be divided up. Why is it that the narcissist retains items which belong to you? Whether it's your soda stream, your favourite doll from childhood, or your collection of Justin Bieber CDs. Why is it that the narcissist keeps hold of certain things that belong to you? Well, first of all, the narcissist doesn't always keep hold of your property. So let's address that. First of all, your items may well be returned to you. Boxed up, dropped off for you, left outside the door and told that you can come and pick them up, or carefully packaged and mailed back to you or delivered by vehicle. Why would the narcissist do this? Quite simply, it is a hoover. It is being done in order to provoke you by returning the items to you, but is done in a way which is cold. The narcissist doesn't come and bring them back to you. Either send them as if they were posting something out to a customer, or leaving your items on the front lawn saying, come and get them, and doing nothing to protect them, keep them out of the rain, or to return them to you. This is a hoover. It's an indirect one where the items are left for you to collect, or a direct one where the items are sent back to you. It's done to provoke you. It's done to assert control over you. And the narcissist gains thought fuel from imagining your reaction to this, and in some instances where you show the reaction to the narcissist, there is the provision of proximate fuel. So where the narcissist makes arrangements for your items to either be delivered to you or for you to collect them, the narcissist is not doing so out of any sense of these items belong to you and therefore I rightfully return them to you, but rather it is being done because as always it serves our interests. We are seeking fuel and control and therefore we send them back to you or make arrangements for you to collect them or have somebody deliver them to you as part of that. It may also serve the purposes of the facade, particularly where we make arrangements for them to be carefully packaged up and returned to you, and that is being done to demonstrate to other people, yes, the relationship's over, but I'm decent, I returned the property to him, and I even went to my own expense to return it. Understand, this isn't done out of any emotional empathy. The narcissist is doing it because it suits the narcissist. It suits the narcissist to control you, to control others through the maintenance of the facade. In some instances, the narcissist will destroy your property. In some instances, we tell you that we have done this, that we might even film it and send you footage of us taking a scissor to your favourite clothing igniting your Star Wars collection in the back garden, whatever it might be. Again, this is done because we have a sense of entitlement to treat your property as the way that we see fit, no sense of accountability towards you with regard to treating your property in a respectful manner, a lack of boundary recognition and a lack of emotional empathy. It's done to provoke you. It is done to assert control over you and draw fuel. In other instances, we may destroy items which belong to you and not tell you that we've done so. Again, this is done out of a sense of entitlement, lack of accountability, lack of emotional empathy and poor boundary recognition. In this instance, the destruction of your property is undertaken as a consequence of as a certain control over you by, in effect, deleting you. The relationship has been ended, probably by us, and therefore, we want nothing to do with you, consigning you to the position of persona non grata. And that means all things associated with you, your property, follow suit. Because we cannot be bothered to return the property to you, we throw it away or we destroy it, showing that we operate with a sense of entitlement to treat your possessions in such a way. 
and we're asserting control over you in a position of withdrawal. We are deleting you. We don't tell you what we've done, but it is done in that instant to assert control over you. In some instances, we might give your property away, perhaps giving it to a friend or a family member or a charity. This is the indirect assertion of control. Again, we operate from a sense of entitlement to dispose of your equipment and your possessions and objects as we see fit. It is done because we have no emotional empathy for you. We do not care how it makes you feel that your Cabbage Patch doll is being given away or that your blender is now in the possession of our cousin. In some instances... Not only is this being done by way of an indirect assertion of control, because by treating your equipment as our own and disposing of it accordingly, we both delete you, but receive thanks and praise from people who believe that it is our possession, or that we say, no, no, she didn't want it any longer, and rather than throw it away, I wanted to ensure that it had a good home. So their response provides us with fuel, their response, their gratitude enables us to feel that we have done the right thing, and thus in our minds that we've asserted control over you. Remember, this would only be known where it's a greater or ultra. This happens in the unconscious where lesser or mid-range narcissists. It contributes to the facade, making a healthy donation of all of your possessions to the local charity shop. Makes us look like a kind and caring person. We receive the fuel from the uh, great and grateful old dears that work at the local RSPCA shop or Dr. Bernardo's the Salvation Army as they receive the contents of your rather expensive clothing collection and shoe collection which would put Imelda Marcos to shame. We hand that over to them. We receive fuel and the fact that they agree with our generosity allows us to assert control over you in an indirect way and also contributes to the facade. And therefore, there are many instances where we don't actually keep hold of your property and we dispose of it, either returning it to you, destroying it, or giving it to somebody else. But what about when we do keep it? What's going on there? Well, of course, we are acting through our rampant sense of entitlement. We do as we wish, how we please, whenever we so choose. And your property is actually seen as an extension of us. It doesn't belong to you, it belongs to us, which reinforces our lack of boundary recognition. We are entitled to keep hold of it. In some instances, we keep hold of it because it provides us with a residual benefit. For instance, we might continue to use your motor vehicle because it enables us to get around, or we use your gym equipment so that we can keep fit. And therefore, we may well keep something of yours because we can actually make use of it. Or... We keep hold of it, not using it, but because we have a lack of accountability to you. Basically, we can't be bothered to return it to you. Why should we? To do so, of course, would be acting out of emotional empathy, and we have none. And our narcissism deems that we have no need to return the property to you because that uses up our time, energy, and expense. And we ought not to expend any of that further upon you as the disengaged from or treacherous and traitorous escaped appliance, and therefore we are not going to do something like that for you. The retention of the material, the property, the objects, the goods, demonstrates our sense of entitlement, the fact that we see you as an extension of ourselves, it demonstrates our lack of emotional empathy, and also a lack of accountability. The lesser or mid-range narcissist sees no reason to return the equipment the possessions of the objects to you and in essence you become forgotten about and those items are perhaps left lying around the house acting as potential hoover triggers not done intentionally but that's a collateral consequence of the fact that the narcissist can't be bothered to return them to you or they're shoved away in the garage or in the attic again because the narcissist sees no benefit to be gained by returning the items to you the greater or the ultra will maintain possession because we know that you're going to try and come and get it back. And therefore, we use the retention out of our sense of entitlement and lack of emotional empathy for the purposes of asserting control over you. 
we use it to our advantage. That when you come and ask for it back, we are able to reject that or extract terms, all part of the game playing that we as the greater and ultra will engage in. With a lesser and mid-range narcissist, there is, no there is no retention with an intent to use it in an alternative fashion in the future. However, at a future point, whether it's a day later or a year later, when you ask for it back, of course, the presence of this, these items with the lesser or mid-range narcissist will be utilized in the moment to assert control over you. If you ask for your collection of crockery to be returned, the narcissist will use this as an opportunity to prevent you re receiving it. It doesn't belong to you. It belongs to me. Well, if you've left it at my house, it now belongs to me. Oh, I thought you didn't want it. You left it here with me. And that is done to assert control over you, to provoke you, and to draw fuel from you. The treatment of those possessions is that they are now ours, and we can do with them as we see fit. The retention of those items arises out of our sense of entitlement, our lack of accountability to you, our lack of boundary recognition, and a lack of emotional empathy. We retain them to enable us to assert control over you, to draw fuel from you. And in the circumstances, it is all about the continuation of the prime aims. We can control you by keeping them. We can draw fuel from you by keeping them. We can draw character traits by keeping them and residual benefits by keeping them. The lesser and mid-range narcissist retains them essentially because they see no reason to return them at the time. You become forgotten about and the items are just left. And the narcissism will utilize the existence of those items to assert control over you at a future point when the need arises. The greater and the ultra will consciously, deliberately, and in a calculated fashion retain the items for the purpose of specifically continuing to manipulate you, to try and cause you to get them back so that we can continue to assert control over you, to puppet you, to manipulate you, and to draw fuel from you. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.